Just so everyone knows, we're live on YouTube. Thank you, Stacy. everyone hear me? Yes. Thank you. And Mayor, our producer Stacy Elms informed us that we are currently live on YouTube. So just a heads up. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Do we have everyone here? Um, I don't see council member Johnson Santos yet. Okay. We'll just I'm give it a... on. Brett's on. I see Deborah and I see you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Um, Diablo's on. For the problem. Well, the city attorney's here. We can start the meeting. <laughs> but we'll just give it a minute and see if Veronica logs on. Can someone give her a quick call too? Um, she just signed on. Oh, good. So all five of us are here now? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the City Council meeting of November 18th, 2020 at 4 p.m. Temporary public comment email established for the City of Los Banos City Council meeting of November 18th, 2020. Emails must be received by 4 p.m. The city has established a temporary email address citizens can use to email public comments on any agenda item and it's a limit of 250 words or less. Any public comments received by November 18, 2020 prior to 4 p.m. will be read aloud during the appropriate time and agenda item. The email address is cityclerk at losbanos.org for comments. Public comment during the public hearings will be taken in real time via email. Once the public hearing is open, the city council will pause the meeting in order to receive emails directed at the public hearing up to 250 words and will read comments into the record after resuming the meeting. As time permits, people uh, please indicate that comments for a particular public hearing by putting public hearing in the subject line of the email and the title of the public hearing. Council chambers are closed to the public and those interested in viewing the city council meeting can do so on the city of Los Vegas website. And that is a YouTube address uh, that you can go to for the city of Los Vegas. So at this time, I would like to call the meeting to order of May 18th 2020 at 4 p.m. And Chief, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Chief Breezy. 
Of course, Mr. Mayor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chief. Director Maloney, roll call, item three. Korea. Here. Johnson Santos. Here. Jones. Here. Lewis. Here. Alalta. Yes. Here. Okay, we do have a quorum. Let's go on to consideration of approval of agenda. And uh, do I have a motion? So move, Mayor. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion by Johnson Santos, second by Priya for the approval of the agenda. Priya? Yes. Okay. Johnson Santos? Yes. Uh, Jones? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Belalta? Yes. Motion carried. Presentation, proclamation recognizing Sergio de Alba, National History Teacher of the Year. And is Sergio on? Yes, I am. Fantastic, Sergio. You know, I wish you could, this could be in person, but, uh, you know, situation dictates that we do it this way. And I hope at some time you could come to the council when the council chambers are open again. And, uh, and, and please uh, uh, present yourself to the council because you are a very deserving individual uh, who I've known for many years and, and, and highly appreciate that you've, uh, you've decided to make Los Spanish your home and a career in teaching. So thank you. So thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to read this proclamation, if I might, Sergio. Proclamation uh, recognizing Sergio D'Alba, National History Teacher of the Year. Whereas Sergio de Alba teaches sixth grade at R.M. Miano Elementary School, he is a National, Geograph uh, National Geographic Certified Teacher, a National Council of Social Studies Elementary Teacher of the Year, and a 2020 Grosnevoir Teacher Research Fellow and in Antarctica. And whereas Sergio de Alba created the award-winning Family Farm Citrus Project. He developed and continued to supervise an annual family astronomy night, facilitated a year-long award-winning inquiry-based patriotic jeopardy competition, and ran a program for self-contained elementary classes that motivated and inspired English language learners. That's a mouthful, Sergio. Let's go on to whereas since 2001, Sergio de Alba has received over 115 awards, grants, and donations, adding up to over $580,000 for programs designed to enrich and enhance his students' education. And whereas Sergio de Alba has selected, was selected for the Fulbright Distinguished Awards in Teaching short-term Fulbright DAS, D-A-S-T, program to Columbia. He was one of 12 United States citizens who will travel to six countries in 2021 as part of a Fulbright D-A-S-T program. And whereas Sergio de Alba has received widespread recognition since he was recently named the 2020 National History Teacher of the Year by the Gilder Lehrman Institute of American History. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the mayor and the city council members of the city of Los Banos do hereby congratulate Sergio de Alba for his exceptional recognition and great honor and wish him continued success in his future endeavors. Sergio, I don't know how we can top that. We're, uh, we're, we're just so impressed with you. I want to thank Mr. Faria for bringing this to my attention. And is there anything you would like to say, Sergio? I just want to thank the community. I mean, the things that we are able to do 
is not because of one person, it's because of what we do together. And so I, I really do appreciate what Los Baños has done for, for our school and for our students. Well, thank you so much. And we wish you much success in, uh, in the future years. We know we're going to be hearing more about you and, and many, many good things. Uh, I visited your classroom and uh, the gardens that you started in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Miano, and just very, very impressive. And Los Banos is lucky to have you here. So thank you so much, Sergio. And what we'll be doing is at some time uh, in the next few days, come on by the City Hall and we'll have that proclamation for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Sergio. Good night. Okay. Mr. Freya, is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah, uh, I have the, uh, being a traveling teacher, I get to go into everybody's, all the sixth grade classrooms when under normal circumstances. I used to just be just amazed when I go into Mr. D'Alba's classroom, all the stuff he has there for kids to do, to learn by doing. And uh, he's, he's a great asset to our community and I'm very happy to see this uh, honor bestowed upon him and very pleased that we could uh, honor him today with this proclamation. Great work, Sergio. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Faria. And thank you, Sergio, for all that you do for our community. Okay, let's go on to item six, public forum. Members of the public may address the city council members on any item of public interest that is within the, uh, the jurisdiction of the city council, which includes agenda and non-agenda items. No action will be taken on non-agenda items as speakers are limited, uh, or speakers may submit their comments by submitting a written statement limited to 250 words or less, or by dropping it off at the utility payment box at City Hall at 520 J Street, or by mail or by mailing city clerk at lostbanis.org. Comments received will be read into the record during the city council meeting. And uh, Director Maloney, do we have any questions that are non-COVID related at this time? I have received zero comments. So zero comments for any agenda items and zero comments for COVID. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to make sure I'm covering all my bases. Okay, let's, I will now close the public forum and go on to item seven, consideration or approval of consent agenda. Items on a consent agenda will be considered to be routine and voted on in one motion unless removed from the consent agenda by a city council member. And tonight we have Director Maloney. Items on the consent agenda are as follows. Warrant numbers 224447 through 224655 in the amount of $1,394,974.18 minutes for the September 16th, 2020 city council meeting Minutes for the October 7th, 2020 City Council meeting. Minutes for the October 21st, 2020 City Council meeting. Minutes for the November 4th, 2020 City Council meeting. City Council resolution number 6283, adopting a revised budget for the 2020-2021 fiscal year as it pertains to expenditures for recruitment services for the Public Works Director, City Engineer, in the amount of $19,990. City Council Resolution Number 6284, approving the acceptance of a donation in the amount of $100 for the purchase of a meal for fire department personnel in amending the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget by increasing the appropriation amount of donation revenue and expenditure accounts in the amount of $100. City Council Resolution Number 6285, approvement, approving amendment number one to professional services agreement with PlaceWorks for Pioneer Ridge Area Plan and 2020-2021 fiscal year budget amendment for the Community and Economic Development Department by increasing expenditures in the amount of $39,536 and increasing revenues in the amount of 
$51,357.50. City Council Resolution Number 6286, authorizing award of construction contract for Las Banas City Hall ADA Counters Project to ANV Contractors Inc. in the amount of $82,000. $650 with a 5% contingency in the amount of 4,000, I mean, yeah, $4,130. And an allowance for the bid alternative in the amount of $10,000 and adopt a revised budget for the fiscal year 2020-2021 as it pertains to the City Hall Impact Fee Fund account. And the items are to be approved as submitted. Is there any city council member who would like to remove an item for discussion? Not hearing any. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor, council member Lewis, I'd like to approve the consent agenda as submitted. Do I have a second? Second, Mayor. Okay, it's been motioned by Lewis, second by Santos for the approval of the consent agenda. Faria? Yes. Johnson Santos? Yes. Jones? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Alalta? Yes. Okay, let's go on to item eight, public hearing. If you challenge proposed action described here and in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing described herein or in written correspondence delivered to the city at or prior to the public hearing. Item 8A, public hearing. To receive public comment and consideration of adopting an ordinance to amend Title IX, Chapter 3 of Los Venice Municipal Code regarding agricultural farm worker employee housing. Item 8A1, ordinance number 1188 amending Title IX, Chapter 3 of the Los Banas Municipal Code regarding em employee housing. And we will go to Director Elms. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Uh, this particular item, we're asking for a continuation to, to continue the public hearing to December 2nd, 2020. And this is in order to give staff adequate time to publish the summary ordinance in the Los Banas Enterprise. And that concludes my report. Okay, so the motion is just for a continuance then? Yes, to a date certain, December 2nd, 2020. Date certain, de December 2nd, 2020. Okay, um, uh, let me open up the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to comment on ordinance number 1188 for the continuance? Uh, Director Maloney, do we have anyone who commented? Um, let me refresh. Okay. I have no comments. Thank you. Is there anyone online who would like to comment on ordinance number 1188? Not hearing any, I will now close the public hearing, bring it back to council level. And do I have a motion and a second for a continuance? Mayor, uh, Councilman Faria. Yes. Uh, I'll move to continue uh, the public hearing of ordinance number 1188 to December 2nd, 2020. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Council Member Lewis. Thank you. I have a motion by Faria, second by Lewis for the continuance of ordinance number 1188 to December 2nd. Faria? Yes. Johnson Santos? Yes. Jones? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Belalta? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, let's go on to item uh, uh, 8B. 81B. <coughs> okay. Public hearing to receive public comment and consideration of adopting an ordinance to amend Chapter 3, Title 9, Article 37 of Los Banas Municipal Code regarding child care facilities, B1, ordinance number 1189, amending Title IX, Chapter 3 of the Los Banas Municipal Code 
regarding large family daycare homes. And we are going to go back to uh, Director Elms. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this particular item is being brought before you um, as it's required um, to update our zoning ordinance to comply with new state laws regarding family daycare homes. And uh, this is in accordance with SB 234, Senate Bill 234. Um, currently, the law requires that uh, cities, local jurisdictions, it requires us to consider small family daycare homes to be a residential use of property, and it prohibits cities from requiring small family daycares, which allows up to eight children in the home, um, from obtaining zoning permits, business licenses, or any fees. Uh, local jurisdictions, historically, we've been able to regulate large family daycares, and that's an operation of a daycare in the home where the home is the primary residence, and it allows up to 14 children at the home. And so historically, we've, we've been able to uh, regulate large family daycares uh, by requiring a conditional use permit. And through the conditional use permit process, we would hold a public hearing and the planning commission would consider whether to approve or conditionally approve um, a conditional use permit. Uh, there was areas that we had jurisdiction that we could regulate. Um, those were noise, um, space and concentration, parking, traffic, you know, uh, to make sure that the neighborhoods um, were adequately addressed. Uh, but the with Senate Bill 234, um, it's taken the regulation from the ability for the cities to regulate through a conditional use permit. It's taken that ability away. So cities no longer can require conditional use permits um, in order to allow large family daycares to operate in a single family residential home. Um, so as such, the city has to treat large family daycares just like we treat small family daycares. Uh, there's no regulating and there's no requirement for a business license. Uh, essentially, the facility, the large family daycare home is just required to get the licensing from um, the state of California. Uh, so this change does affect um, our ability to regulate commercial daycares. It does not affect our ability, let me state that again, to regulate commercial daycare centers. Um, so facilities that um, are in a daycare center, uh, so preschools, um, after school type programs in an actual child daycare facility are still, it's, we are still allowed to regulate through a conditional use permit, which we um, have recently implemented within the zoning code. Uh, this only affects residential care facilities. So with that, staff is asking the city council to consider uh, adopting a actually waiving the first reading and introducing by title ordinance number 1189. Um, and we had also asked that the city council would open the public hearing um, for this particular item. And that concludes my report. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. So uh, if it's okay with council, I'll open a public hearing first and bring it back to council level. Okay. Is there anyone in the public who would like to comment on ordinance number 1189? Open the public hearing. Director Malney, do we have any comments? Um, I've received no comments. Okay, is there anyone online who would like to comment? Okay, not hearing any, I will now close the public forum, bring it back to council level. And is there anyone on the council who would like to comment on 1189? Um, um, real quick, Mayor. Pardon me, go, go ahead, Veronica, go ahead. <laughs> Um, I wanted to know, what is the cap on um, large family daycares, uh, amount of people, or amount of children, excuse me? For non-children? Um, oh, so I'm sorry, actual children. I do apologize. <laughs> so it, no, I don't have kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the maximum is 14 children. Uh, the state does regulate the combination, so many infants to so many toddlers um, to so many school-age children. And then the state does also regulate um, how many you can have of your own children um, in the home in addition to the, the daycare children. 
Um, so the, the state does regulate that, um, but basically the threshold is 14 children and you are allowed by law to have a helper. So an employee um, can be there also at the site. Thank you. Mm -hmm. is, is there any limitation on the size of the house as compared to 14 children? No, there is not. There is no limitation um, on the size of the home. There is, uh, they do have to provide adequate um, rear yard play area. And so a, a safe outdoor play area, that is a requirement of the state. Um, but there is no limitation on how small the house can be. So during COVID, has anything changed? Not the daycare for daycare centers right now, are they considered essential that they can stay open with all these kids? They are considered essential, especially for essential uh, workers. So um, there was a time period that daycare facilities were technically only supposed to be open for essential workers, um, but they were still allowed to be open. They did have regulations in terms of class sizes, but that's for a facility. A large family daycare home, you know, where it's in the home, um, it didn't have the same restrictions as, as far as, as we could see. Um, there was restrictions specific to child daycare facilities. Um, so preschool facilities where the, the class sizes were limited to how many children could be in a cohort. So basically who, who monitors this then? The state of California, the licensing agency monitors. And they do surprise yeah. inspections. Do they actually send people out to monitor this or is this they just sure do. To pay your money and get a license? No, the state is very aggressive um, with their licensing for daycare facilities. Okay. All right. Okay. Are there any additional questions from council? All right. So this is a first reading and an introduction. Uh, who would like to make that? Mayor, Council Member Faria. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I would move to waive the first reading of ordinance number 1189 as read by title. Do I have a second? Mayor, I'll second that. Okay, it's been motioned by Faria for the, uh, uh, for the waiving of the first reading on ordinance 1189 and is second by Santos. Faria? Yes. Uh, Johnson Santos? Yes. Jones? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Alalta? Yes. Mr. Freer, go ahead. Now I'd like to move to introduce ordinance number 1189 by title. Mr. Santos? Second. Okay, motion by Faria, second by uh, Santos for the introduction of 1189. Faria? Yes. Johnson Santos? Yes. Jones? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Lalta? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Let's go on to item nine, speed cushion policy review update. Uh, Mr. Pagin. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, tonight, uh, just to go over, just want to go over some direction that we're pursuing on this and uh, make sure we have the scope of service correct uh, with what the council is expecting. Um, on October 21st, the city council um, unanimously, unanimously approved uh, that staff reviewed the existing speed cushion policy, specifically, specifically in terms of the rigidity of some of the criteria and the treatment of collector and arterial streets with fronting driveways. Those are two special areas. Uh, since this staff report has been done, there has been a little bit of progress in what we're doing, but we are uh, in the process of contacting traffic engineering firms that specialize in this field. We actually got one firm that has responded. I'm not going to just not going to say the name at the time because we, we have to buy our purchasing policy. It's an informal service. We have to seek out three quotes before we can go into a, uh, professional services agreement. So we're still seeking that, but we did have one firm that's quite known in this that did respond to us already. 
Um, the estimate was about, was about $12,000. So it was a little bit higher than what I gave you in this staff report as fiscal impact, but they did. Let me go over, um, the, uh, following tasks that, that they proposed. Uh, it was a review of the current city speed cushion policy, just to review the entire policy, um, review the functional road classification map. This is very important because some of the areas that were uh, the, the concern is, is on arterials and collectors, and that is shown as a functional classification on a functional classification map, which is state and federally controlled. So this firm actually does have uh, quite a bit of experience with this. They've done a lot of these both uh, speed cushion policies, but they're more like neighborhood calming policies. They do a larger policy than we're asking for, which maybe in the future would be something we should look at. But uh, so they know exactly this issue. Um, that was. The second thing, the third was research other municipality speed cushion policy and um, all the way from definition of it to typical devices, uh, different stages of traffic calming, um, potential of di diverting traffic. That does have a lot to do with speed cushions because when you put a speed cushion on one street, the street right next door gets hit pretty hard usually. Uh, typical implement implementation processes, this is the petitions, neighborhood meetings and that type of stuff which is one of the areas that did, did come up uh, to review. Uh, another, um, the fourth item that they proposed to us, a description of recommendations, including potential traffic calming policies for arterials and collectors. They didn't specifically say speed cushions, but they did say traffic calming policies. They do have a lot of issues with this exact issue with other cities. So they do have some, a lot of experience on this. And they do have a report that will come out of this uh, uh, and a capsule presentation on it. This is just one of what I need to get three. We the public risk department needs to search out three of these, um, at least contact three. Uh, so we are in that process of doing that. So what we'll do is we'll actually bring back the, the professional services agreement. Once we have those uh, other two entities involved and see, take a look at the price that they're giving us. Uh, this is in the realm that the city manager actually can approve this on an informal bid process, but we will, but we have to bring this back for a budget amendment anyway to the council. So we'll just make it part of, uh, so you know what's happening with the scope and everything. It'll be part of the resolution at that point. It'll be both because we have not budgeted anything uh, for this item this year. Uh, it will be coming out of the traffic impact fund. So that's the, that's the direction that we're heading so far. Um, I, I would expect Hopefully, uh, the second meeting in December, the first meeting in January, I'll have enough uh, responses back from transportation firms, as well as having working with our city attorney on, on a professional services agreement, which takes a good week and a half to get also. So uh, it takes a while, but then once we get on, I believe they estimated two, two months to have a uh, survey to us. Let me see. Yeah, it's about they have six to two, six to eight weeks. They said they'd be able to get that to us. That's the direction that we're taking. Uh, looking, uh, hopefully that is well the uh, what the council was looking for. But I'm ready for any um, any uh, suggestions or or comments on this. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have any comments from council, Mr. Mayor, Council Member Lewis? Go ahead. Thank you. A um, couple of questions, Mark. Um, in the report, it indicated that, um, of course, staff was looking at hiring a consulting firm, which you've indicated. And it also says that the next year's, uh, in the next fiscal year, the staff uh, is planning on releasing a request for proposal for completion of the traffic calming. So. Are we talking about the 2021-22 fiscal budget, or are we still talking about this year? No, we're talking about 2021-2022 because that particular document is about a $60,000 document. So it, uh, if we did it now, we could still do a budget amendment, but you wouldn't have issues with this particular issue answered uh, for a good six to eight months. So uh, I've seen this particular company that we're working with working that has given us a bid price has done some wonderful traffic calming whole policies. They're, they're like 40 pages long. And I, I would recommend, uh, and I think the city manager agrees with us, 
that in, in fiscal year 21, 22, we budget that money that we need to do that and actually go into a, uh, an entire traffic calming, they call it neighborhood calming documents, there are different names for those. But, and then that would take, you know, six to eight months to do. And then the, uh, the cushion policy that we are looking at now would stay the same. It might have a slight revisions for that, but that's why we did it in this two phases. Okay. And uh, with that, also, uh, some of the other issues that I brought up is uh, the rigidity of uh, how many people had to respond in wanting uh, the traffic calming in their neighborhood, which currently in our city is 100% of the people. Well, 100% of the people where the bumps, where the calming devices have to agree. And, and I'm I'd have to look back again to see how many people uh, have to agree to having it on their street. Whereas, um, you know, when I downloaded all of Stockton's calming um, guidelines, it, it appears that some of the things that you suggested are already in theirs. And uh, one in particular that you talked about is that when you have a street uh, that is affected by um, uh, excessive speeds, uh, when you if you put calming devices there, that usually affects the next street over, and uh, that that was part of uh, their proposal as well. Is that when they uh, get ready to do traffic calming devices, they meet with the neighbor, not only people on the street, but the people in the surrounding streets that might be affected, so that it, it's a total package of trying to calm it down. But I just want to make sure that uh, we're not leaving out the fact that. Um, some of the issues are um, how we have to meet, how, how residents have to meet the application process, which I think is a bit over the top uh, for the city of Los Banos. And that was one of the things that I brought up that I would like to see revised as well. So I, I do appreciate yes. you know, the, the city and you're working on this uh, quickly to try to find an agency that can uh, work with us to to get some new ordinances in place as far as traffic calming is concerned um because you know as i indicated i i, I don't want to see any of the old neighborhoods left out that by um no fault of theirs uh you know streets were built fronting the collectors and they are affected by um people who disregard speed and uh, the safety of a neighborhood. Yes, uh, the, the task will be to look at the entire document, uh, including that they did make a, this particular firm did make a comment that 70% that we had is pretty common. Some go down to 50%, but not very many. That's regardless, they'll present that to us. But they did have a very specific thing in the scope that I want to bring up to everyone's attention. Uh, one of it is, um, uh, let's see. Traffic calming uh, and what other what measures of traffic calming on collectors and arterials include potential traffic calming policies. They will look at the speed cushion issue, but not ne that may not necessarily be something that's recommended on arterials and collectors just because of the speed. But there is other things they might recommend, and that also may lead to just different classification of a street. Also, they have to look at all that because it's not as easy as going in there and saying, "Oh." Now this is a local street we, and we go on from that. We get funding based on our classifications. So they'll help us on that, which is really good because they're the experts. Whoever comes on is an expert, not particularly. I mean, we know traffic engineering a little, a little bit, but not to this extent. So, so uh, council person Lewis, yeah, the task will be to look at the entire document, especially the rigidity part of it. But because what happens is to tell you the truth, it is true that you have to look at the neighborhood and you have to have, uh, meetings with the with the citizens and things like that if we go to that full bore treatment we actually the speed cushions actually become a very expensive item to install but this will be all looked at uh, through whoever we choose and hopefully like i said hopefully second meeting in december or at latest first meeting in january we'll, we'll come forward with you with a budget amendment to do this work all right thank you thank you mr may okay any other questions uh, any other questions <clears throat> Councilman Faria. Go ahead. Uh, so we're uh, we're going to be contracting a firm to look at the entire city's traffic plan. 
uh, or just particular or just collectors and arterials uh, problem problem streets. Am I understanding no, this right? No, at this at this point they'll be looking at the whole policy, but okay. on our, on the arterials and collectors part of it, they'll be concentrating on only the driveway fronting streets. Okay. The other ones that don't have the other ones don't have driveways fronting it perfectly fit into the no speed cushion issue. I mean, that's, they're made for that traffic carrying. Now, later on, if there's something in the, when you go to a full blown traffic calming document, uh, mm -hmm. they'll look at every single street. They'll look at, and they're not going to look at individual. They'll look like typical cases. So they're not going to go down, you know, vineyards, then I streets. They're going to go typical cases with fronting driveways that, that have a character of a local street, although they have the, the capacity and the designation of a lar of a larger arterial collector. That's sort of what they're looking at at this at this uh, at this quote that I have. I'll get more quotes though. Okay, uh, I'm on a corner and on I'm on the corner of Stanislaw and Hastings, and Hastings is uh, uh, quite the racetrack, and so um, I'll be we'll be we'll be looking into seeing how the best way to to go about that. I don't think I don't know whether Hastings is considered a collector, but these are the kinds of things that this firm is going to be going to be examining. Is that correct? Uh, no, the, the, we already have the designations. Hastings is a local street. I kind of think we might have uh, application in on that. I'm not sure. That's a uh, local street, and that won't change. Local okay. streets aren't going to change. Should, I mean, what might what will probably change is the petition process, the percentage of people that have to be on it. The um, speed surveys may change a little bit. Al although on preliminary review, they said we were pretty typical. No, we're sure. not going to change the local streets. Just me, just the procedure to be okay. hopefully more user, more user friendly is basically okay. what, what we heard from council. Very good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank Any you other questions? Okay. So, um, let's see, see if I'm coming direction and how to proceed. So, uh, do we have enough direction for you, Mark? Yes, it, it seems like we're heading on the right path. Okay. Um, uh, that'd be great. Uh, any any off, offline comments that you might think of later, just give me a call because we're in the process of putting a consultant on, and this is the time to do that. So thank you very much. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor, right. could you please state for the record that there was a consensus to move forward with this, please? Council, you're okay with that? There was a consensus to move forward? You can just nod your heads. Okay. All right. All right, thank you. All right, let's go on to item 10, COVID-19 uh, uh, status update. We're gonna go to city manager Terrazas. Uh, thank, thank you, mayor. Um, so this evening, um, you really just using um, a recent uh, Facebook post from um, Merced County as the basis for my update. So the state earlier this week, uh, based on the previous three re weeks results, uh, move Merced County uh, back to the more restrictive tier in, in terms of the tiered uh, designation for the county. So we are now at the uh, widespread uh, coronavirus 19 tier, uh, which is the purple tier, uh, due to the elevated case counts and the ongoing continued rise of the uh, test positivity rate. Um, so what does that mean for us um, in terms of what's open and, and not open? So um, let's see, for retail, uh, retail can continue to remain open indoors uh, with a max 25% capacity. Uh, likewise, for shopping centers, open indoors uh, with a 25% capacity. Uh, food courts are closed for those shopping centers. Um, museums, zoos, and aquariums closed um, indoors. Uh, outdoor only operation. Uh, places of worship uh, can conduct services outdoors only. Uh, movie theaters, likewise, outdoors only. Uh, gyms and fitness centers, um, outdoor only operations, um, and restaurants, um, outdoor only operations as well. 
Um, so again, we're transitioning to that purple tier uh, with some uh, some of those additional restrictions. Um, with those additional restrictions, um, at this point, just as just a reminder, uh, continue to practice those uh, good personal hygiene practices. Wash your hands. Wear your face covering. Um, the, the county is suggesting that we all continue uh, to practice social distancing. Um, they're also recommending getting tested. Um, uh, negative testing helps lower our positivity rate um, and uh, helps lower our positivity rate. Um, and that's really all I have tonight, Mayor. Again, the big, the big message that was delivered uh, earlier this week by the state back to the purple tier Fortunate, unfortunately, a little more restrictive in our business operations, um, but you know there is always the possibility to move back uh, to that less restrictive tier. But that 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 will depend on the data as we move forward. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, thank you. And I just might add that uh, we still have per capita the lowest uh, uh, transmission rate, but we are going up a little bit. Uh, so I would tell the Los Banos citizens and ask them, uh, continue with the social distancing, please wear the mask and, uh, and please, uh, uh, watch the gatherings during, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, because that, uh, transmission rate can go up in a heartbeat and Los Banos has done a pretty good job of, uh, of, of trying to keep that per capita rate, uh, uh, low. And, uh, and again, we are the lowest in the county. And I will tell you that within the city limits of Los Banos, we've had 12 deaths, 12 people have passed away. And in the county, we have two additional for a total in the 93635 area code, Los Banos uh, and surrounding for a total of 14. And 12 of those are in the city limits of Los Banos, classified as in the city limits of Los Banos. So uh, it's not great, but it's not, uh, I mean, compared to some of the other cities uh, uh, for population rate, uh, it's, it's not bad, but one death is always, I don't want to minimize anything. And please out there in the audience and council, I don't want to minimize any, one death is too many. Uh, but, but this is uh, what we're doing in the city of Los Banos. So uh, please, 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 uh, let's let's keep this to a minimum and uh, and follow the correct procedures. Are there any questions on the uh, COVID nineteen status update? All right, thank you. Let's go on to advisement of public notices. Uh, two reports, Director Elms. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the first item is a conditional use permit for JAMS 209 Sports Bar and Grill. This is an exciting item um, as this would be for the Old Crest Theater location at 516 I Street um, and is hopefully a foretelling sign that um, JAMS 209 will be coming to Las Banas, which we're excited. Uh, the next item is a mobile food vendor permit. Um, for Roger Pierce, doing businesses A1 water quality. This is an existing mobile food vendor uh, permit, and they're ask, asking for an extension of time. Um, so this particular unit is located at 1248 East Pacheco Boulevard here in the city of Los Banos. Both of these items will be presented to the Planning Commission on Wednesday, November 25th at 530 um, using GoToMeeting platform. That concludes my report. Uh, Director Elms, yes. Uh, will, will they be looking at uh, at the parking in the downtown with all the other businesses? If it is going to be a bar and grill there, uh, 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 people parking in parking places for an extended period of time, so it doesn't impact the hairdressers, the barber shops, the other uh, the other places places of business that are there. Yes. Um, so for downtown, there are exceptions, and it is to encourage restaurants and activity downtown. Um, as a part of the downtown strategic plan, we have um, strategies to study parking. Uh, but the thought is with, yes, to, to be mindful of 
of businesses and um, to be considerate of the parking. Um, but the thought is that this business would be open. Um, their peak would be during while um, the hair salons and the banks are not necessarily open and vice versa. The hair salons and banks would be, um, their peak hours would be while um, this this particular business would have low volume, um, but definitely something that we're we're very sensitive about um, with with all of the businesses downtown, and we're constantly looking at ways that we can address it and make it better. Thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, uh, any other questions of uh, Director Ellis? Okay, let's go on to item twelve, City Manager's report, Alex. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Not not a lot uh, this afternoon or early evening. Um, it's it's fall. It's fall out there. So in some of our neighborhoods, you're, we're seeing a lot of leaves. Um, so we we won't officially start leave pickup until the end of November, uh, November 30th. But the crew was out earlier today to try and get ahead of things. But I just want to remind folks that we will begin leave pickup on November 30th. Um, and leaf pickup is the day before your normal garbage pickup day. So um, it's fall, the trees are shedding, um, and we'll be out uh, collecting those leaves beginning the end of the month. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, thank you. Item 13, reportable uh, report update, Mercer County Association of Governments, MCAG, and uh, Measure V Committee. Uh, well, just to let you know that, uh, that things are progressing forward with Pioneer. Uh, through MCAG and through the city of Los Banos, uh, good partnership, and um, uh, with Pioneer Trail. Uh, so we're we're looking we're looking forward to that. Plus, uh, with uh, CMAC congestion mitigation money and uh, and Highway 152 improvements uh, to improve the traffic flow. We had another meeting yesterday, and MCAG attended along with uh, city staff and Caltrans. So we're very excited about uh, about the changes they're going to make on 152. So the traffic flows and the biggest one, and I mean the biggest one, is the synchronization of the lights, uh, creating some barriers down 152 to uh, limit the left-hand turns. And um, and so we're going to have two paths, Pioneer and a better and a more improved Highway 152. So it's taken a while to do this, but uh, it's going to work. And then the uh, Billy Wright expansion, uh, you know, they're still moving forward with that, uh, depending upon the acreage that we can acquire. Uh, so we'll have a, uh, a dump site on the, uh, uh, on, on, the, in the, on the west side of, uh, of, of the county, so which is very important for the survival of the city of Los Banos and Dos Palos and Gustine. So that's all I have. Okay, let's go on to item 14. City Council member reports, and tonight we'll start with Mr. Faria. Uh, <clears throat> nothing special tonight. Just another congratulations to Sergio D'Alba on his fine work. And thank you for the proclamation. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Mr. Jones. Uh, no report tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Lewis. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I, I just have two items I'd like to bring up. Um, I think since we passed, uh, the city passed um, uh, the contract to affiliate itself with the Pacific Clean Energy, PCE, was there a meeting after we uh, had that last vote uh, to affiliate, to have the city affiliate with them? And if so, um, I think it's really important that we have a report out to the council as to what that meeting, what is in that meeting so that we know what's going on. Um, so if someone attended that meeting, I'm, I'm not sure, Mayor, if it was you or if it was Alex that attended, could you please report out at the next meeting um, what was discussed in that meeting so that the council can be on board with what's happening? Sure, and just to be safe, uh, Alex and Bill, can we add kind of a uh, PC update uh, agenda item uh, just so we stay within scope and, uh, and are able to, to talk about it? But I can just tell you very briefly that uh, we were accepted into the, uh, uh, into the fold uh, by unanimous vote, enthusiastically by a unanimous vote, vote. So we are part of the PCE family now. 
And then uh, tomorrow night is uh, the 19th. There is uh, another meeting. Uh, so, uh, so that's basically where we're at at this point. But we can include a PCE agenda item uh, if needed, or if we could wrap it up into something else where uh, where we can talk about this at length uh, most of the time. Okay. okay. And then um, the last thing, um, which I think is a big concern for the residents in our city, is that we're having um, issues with our garbage pickup with Republic. And um, the garbage pickup for Wednesday uh, in my district neighborhood is still sitting there, all three cans. Um, I guess I, I'm just wondering is, do we need to bring someone from Fresno to explain to us why they can't pick up garbage on the days designated? And uh, do we have some sort of way that we find them for not being um, uh, thankful to pick up garbage for our residents who pay their bill to the city? Who wants to I'm not sure if Mark that. wants to answer that or if Alex wants to answer that. Yeah, well, I, I, I can give it a shot, at least to, to some of what's happening. Uh, you are correct. The last two weeks have been really, uh, really uh, tough times for Republic. Uh, it, it, we have been talking to them quite frequently. Um, some garbage last week that's supposed to be picked up on Wednesday got picked up on Saturday. They actually this week have added some drivers from their Salinas operation. They just do not have the drivers available. Uh, and they will be probably uh, one or two uh, routes behind this week, which must be uh, Council Person Lewis, as I know mine is one of them. And they should be picked up on the next day. And this is in lieu of there was there was a holiday last week, so they jump a day anyway. But uh, and so by Saturday, they'll have everything picked up this week. And what they have told us in an email is they have uh, more drivers coming on. So the whole schedule should revert back to normal next week. They were able to get a couple more drivers in the area. Now, also realize, though, next week, Thursday is, is a holiday. So it, that naturally jumps one day after Thursday. So so it's, it's hard to say that. But that's what we've been told. Uh, uh, and hopefully they're going to follow through with that. They've had anything from sicknesses to retirement to um, uh, the inability to add drivers right now. Uh, but they did, according to what the last email we got, they did add a couple drivers and they have borrowed from their Salinas staff to get this week done. The next week they should be on normal schedule, taking into account holidays, which is normal. So uh, that's as much as I have at the moment. Staff has pursued them all the way from the city manager uh, to my operations manager before we got response on this. So uh, uh, we'll just, we're trying to get them to tell us ahead of time so we can actually let, let people know. But if anyone's watching, if your garbage isn't picked up, please leave it out in the same spot for one more week. And let's, uh, and hopefully they will uh, stay by what they said starting next week. That's all I have. Okay, Alex, did you have anything additional that you wanted to add? Uh, I mean, given given the item is not agendized, I, I don't want to go into in, into much more detail. But just to, just to follow up they, uh, in regard to Mr. Fachin's comments, we have been in contact with the uh, with Republic Services. Um, we we we're aware of the issues. I would suggest if there's a if there's a desire for a more detailed update um, that we agendize something for the for an upcoming council meeting. Um, so we can so we can have a more broader discussion about what the options might be going forward. So I I would suggest that we agendize something for a future council meeting. Okay, I I, I don't have issue with that because at this particular time, um, you know I, I I don't know what the inner workings are, and that's really of no concern to me. The concern for me with that company is that we have a contract with them, and they haven't been delivering services to us as, as indicated. Um, okay. I'm, I'm going to have to step in and cut this off. I'm really sorry. Uh, we're, we're getting to the point that uh, it's going past. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to ask, Alex, Lewis, I'm gonna ask Alex to do is please agendize uh, it, uh, that on, on a future 
uh, council meeting. And if it could be done at the next council meeting, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lewis. All right. Uh, anything else, Mrs. Lewis? Those are the only two items that I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Santos? Um, I first want to wish everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I first want to wish everyone a uh, happy Thanksgiving. Um, I believe, I want everybody to be safe because, you know, it's, it's crazy out there. So please be safe, but happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And before I get into my ugly cheers, I want to thank everyone here for these past four years. I'm going to come give me more. <laughs> um, it has been a big, it's been a wonderful experience for me. And, uh, and um, I want to thank everyone for just kind of welcoming me into the fold. So <laughs> I really appreciate everyone's staff. Um, <laughs> my fellow council members, Alex, I mean, Bill, <laughs> Mark, thank you so much. I, I am truly humbled by this experience and I'm going to try to save these for <laughs> stop and not do this next week. So I'm going to get it up now, but thank you from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank everyone. So I'm going to stop here right there. <laughs> well, you're going to get another shot. So, you know, you're going to get another chance to, uh, to be very emotional and, uh, and depending upon the election that may not happen till possibly the 16th, uh, depending upon the certification. So <laughs> well, then I'm grateful I got to get it out now. So hopefully later I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not that I'm not emotional. I'm just not ready to be emotional yet. <laughs> uh, okay. Anything else, Mrs. Santos? Okay. Oh yes. I just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving and safe Thanksgiving. And um, uh, uh, could we at some time maybe uh, 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 Alex get a, an update on Center Avenue that you could possibly send out again to the uh, uh, to the council on uh, uh, when the completion will be of Center Avenue, and so we could talk to our constituents if they constituents if they call us. And uh, also, um, could um, could you please? And this is more of kind of a directive. Uh, contact the housing authority of Merced County and be a lot firmer with them in relationship to why we cannot have the uh, migrant center as a temporary homeless facility to save lives for the, of the homeless during the winter. You and I have worked on this for a number of months and Adam Gray hasn't been able to get anywhere. The supervisors haven't been getting anywhere. And I don't know why everybody's so scared of the, uh, the housing authority. So I don't want to, I don't want to belabor this, but, uh, but we need to get a little tougher to find out why the, the migrant center can't be used. We have a beautiful facility out there that we can house homeless and we can house them in a warm, cozy place, and we can't gain access to it because the housing facility doesn't want anyone to use it. So if you could please do that, Alex, I would greatly appreciate it. And use the language you need to use. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. And you know, Alex, it's no reflection on you because you've been working on this with me. So I'm just asking that we just get a little tougher with these guys and enlist uh, the help of anyone we can get the help of to get this done. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go to closed session. Conference. Let me bring this up here. Conference with labor negotiators pursuant to government code section. 54957.6, agency designated representatives, city council, city manager Terrazas, city attorney Vaughn, city clerk, human resources director Maloney, finance director Williams, legal counsel Tufo, employee organizations, Los Banos Police Dispatchers, Community Service Officers Association, LBPD CSOA, and unrepresented miscellaneous employees. And if we have anything to report, uh, we will do so after we return from closed session. 
So at this time, we are now going to sign off as a council and we will uh, we will be going into closed session. And again, if there's anything to report, I will come back on and do so and adjourn, and adjourn the meeting. Any business, any other uh, general business before the, the council, Alex? Or can we uh, now uh, 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 go to closed session? I believe we can go to closed session, uh, Lucy. Yes, yeah. yes, we can. Yeah. All right. Okay, council, we'll meet you at closed session. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night, everyone.